I'm Nikki Lowe and welcome to the Wisdom for Working Mums podcast show where I share insights and interviews that support women to combine their family, work and life in a more successful and sustainable way. Welcome to this episode of the Wisdom for Working Mums podcast show. I'm your host Nikki Lowe and today we're going to be talking about mother's guilt. Speak to any mother and the chances are that somewhere in the conversation, the topic of mother's guilt will come up. I know from supporting hundreds of women over the years that in my work as an executive coach, mother's guilt seems to hold us back and undermine our ability to thrive as a working mum. So I really wanted to come on here today and share with you some thoughts around mother's guilt. Actually, what is it? Um, What's the impact of it? And what can we do to kind of protect ourselves from the unhelpful impact that it can have in our life, the almost toxic impact. I think my son was only about two seconds old when I had my first experience of the true impact of mother's guilt. I ended up having an emergency C-section after a planned, you know, the most natural birth that I could have had um, and wanted to do kind of the whole hypnobirthing approach and wanted skin to skin as he was born. And the reality was that I had this emergency C-section and as he was being born, I had this most horrific pain down the right side of my head to the point where I actually thought I was going to be, I was having a stroke. And to look at him as he was being taken to my left was just so painful for me. I struggled to look at him, let alone even kind of drink in that beautiful or what was meant to be a beautiful moment of kind of laying eyes on him for the first time. And I had this most overwhelming feeling of mother's guilt. And that kind of just went on from the hours that followed to the weeks to the months to the point where I think my my mother's guilt really undermined me um in those first 18 months of of his life to the point where I I think it contributed to the adrenal fatigue that I got and you know nearing burnout and it caused me to take a really long hard step back and really look at what was going on and studying mother's guilt and as somebody that is an emotional intelligence practitioner I've I've been trained and I'm accredited in emotional intelligence um, I really wanted to understand this emotion and understand what was going on and what I want to share with you today in this episode is some of that and hopefully what that will do will kind of educate and empower you to understand your mother's guilt if you suffer with it and empower you with some really simple but practical tools that you can put into place to help free yourself from the unhelpful aspects. So let's dive in. So I think the first step is realising that actually our brains are not actually wired for us to thrive as working mums. And I'm sorry if that sounds a bit doom and gloom but the reality is that we have got a brain that's architecture has evolved over you know thousands and millions of years and actually if we can understand the human mind we can understand some of the struggle that we have with it so actually from an evolutionary perspective our brains are designed to designed to protect us and they are designed to stop us being killed they're not designed for us to feel happy and fulfilled so the first step is understanding that and knowing that actually it's not our fault if we're feeling all of these emotions that might be getting in the way of us thriving but it's actually if we want to enjoy life and feel fulfilled and have the kind of life that we want we need to take some responsibility about what we're going to do about that And we have an ancient brain. So if we think about the architecture and how our brains have evolved, they've evolved over those millions of years. So the architecture actually is pretty primitive. And but we're in a modern world. And actually, we're at kind of a very interesting time in the world in terms of technology and all of the things that we all know about that means that we actually are struggling more than ever. And so we're at the mercy of these evolutionary mechanisms in our brain, really, um, that we share with other animals. And what we have is a brain that's designed for us to um, reproduce and protect that offspring. But 
if you think about kind of how we've evolved over those thousands of years, we had to look after our babies in very high risk environments. And so our brains were designed for us to fear kind of fearful and feel guilty if we put that, our offspring in any way, shape or form um, exposed to that kind of environment. So knowing that hopefully we can give ourselves a little bit of compassion that actually if we are feeling guilty we've evolved to actually feel those feelings so and we're actually evolved to feel kind of the guilt and anxiety even more when we become mums so it's not our fault it's our kind of biological and evolutionary kind of makeup But if we want to feel happy and fulfilled, we have to take responsibility to thrive. So add into that that actually the strategies that we may have once relied on to keep an emotional even keel before having children can often be undermined once we become mothers. So, you know, sleep, (laughs) getting access to to, to really nutritious, nutritional food when we're, you know, got very little time um our connection we don't get to see our friends as much and and have that kind of um adult to adult connection as much we might not have time for our hobbies or you know time for ourselves so all those strategies that we may have used to keep our emotions in check and in an even keel often aren't accessible to us or accessible in the same way anymore so that can kind of increase the chance of our primitive brains being triggered into these unhelpful kind of emotional responses. So if we start with that as a landscape of actually the chances are we're going to feel some of those unhelpful emotions, what is it that we can do to empower ourselves with tools and resources so that we can thrive? Because it's not only our evolutionary and biological makeup, but We're at an interesting time, I think, in society and culture where we're under more pressure than ever as mums, whether we we work outside the home or not. We're all kind of mums that are working, but there are these crazy expectations that we swim in every day as as mums you know the the cliche of you know feeling like we've got to work like we don't have children and mother like we don't have our work and you know the, the but the expectation that you know if if we work outside of the home then we're somehow not good enough mothers but if we do stay at home then we're somehow not as valuable and not contributing as much the fact that you know we're expected to keep you know these perfect homes but if we sacrifice any time with our children to to look after their homes then we're somehow doing them a disservice that we should also you know have the perfect bodies but if we sacrifice time with our family to you know go to the gym then again somehow we're letting them down and you know that we should be everything to everybody and not let anybody down in that means that we have these crazy kind of expectations that mean that guilt just is there and we swim in it and it's almost it's like fish swimming in water we're almost so not aware of the guilt that we swim in that it just becomes almost unconscious and I remember realizing the craziness of this guilt when I was struggling to get pregnant with my second child and I'd had multiple miscarriages and just felt incredibly guilty that my son was an only child and that he wasn't getting to experience the love and fun of having a sibling and then when I was finally blessed to to fall pregnant with my my daughter then feeling this incredible guilt about my son having to share the love of his parents with another child and me just going oh my goodness you know I can't win with the guilt almost we're in this this between a rock and a hard place whichever way we turn we almost experience guilt so for me this is about us getting really really clear on what is guilt and what is helpful and functional guilt and what's unhelpful dysfunctional guilt and how do we maintain um our well-being and, and sanity when we swim in in that society and cultural expectations as well So 
The first step with this is really about becoming aware of of guilt. So knowing actually how does it show up? Because as I said before, sometimes we're we're so in and unconscious to the guilt that we're part of, we might even not even be aware of how it shows up. So getting clear on noticing. So what's the pattern that you notice with guilt? So is it that you perhaps when you're feeling guilty, you become more tense? And if you become more tense, where would you notice that first? So for me, it's in my upper back, in my shoulders and in my lower neck. I, you know, when I'm feeling tense there, it's often a sign that I'm stressed. And when I kind of peel back the layers of that, the chances are there's, there's some level of guilt sitting beneath that. And noticing what might trigger your guilt more. So were there particular situations, particular people, particular times? So I might feel more guilty or I'm triggered more into my mother's guilt when I'm hormonal, for example, and accepting that that's just an emotion. And all that an emotion is, is chemically coded data. So each emotion that we have actually is is a message for us. And the message in guilt is that we've done something wrong, that we've dishonoured one of our own standards that we've set ourselves. So it's just noticing that there's a message in that. So I'm feeling guilty and that message is meant to tell me I've done something wrong. And with that then, it's looking at, so what have I done wrong? Because sometimes our guilt is actually a functional guilt. And it's there as a positive, as I say, from an evolutionary perspective, it was to keep our offspring safe and protected. So if, for example, somebody had left their child in a hot car on a hot summer's day, that guilt is there to say, actually, that's wrong and don't do that again. But if that feeling is there because I've gone out to work today and I've not spent the whole day with my child, actually, Is there something wrong in that? And that's where we have to question our guilt and become, start exercising some choice and being discerning over it because some guilt is dysfunctional. It doesn't serve a purpose. So with that, it's about understanding the message. So the message is I've dishonoured one of my own standards and we have two options then. It's about actually, do we change our behaviour? So for me, something that I am willing to feel guilty about is spending too much time on my screen in front of my children. So looking at my phone when I'm with my children. So for me, it's not about feeling guilty about the quantity of time I spend with my children, but actually the quality of time. So the times that I'm with them, I want it, I want to be really present. So if I'm spending too much on my phone or I'm on my phone at all with them, actually, for me, that's a functional guilt. I don't want to do that. And that message is telling me, actually, you need to change something. You need to put down your phone or you need to create a boundary around what you do with your phone when you get in from work. But actually, if the message is that I'm feeling guilty, but this is a dysfunctional guilt, so it's not serving a purpose. So actually, I want to and need to and choose to work. So if I feel guilty for that, for me, that's a dysfunctional guilt because me not working actually doesn't make me a good mum. And I know this from experience because as many of you may have heard my story, what led me to set up for Wisdom for Working Mums is I was experiencing such high levels of mother's guilt that were really undermining my health that I decided, I tried lots of configurations of my work. So I tried full time, I tried part time and I tried different days and different kind of hours. And I got to the point where I decided that the only option was to give up work and it felt like the only option at the time. And I was in a fortunate position that I could do that for a little while. But what I discovered when I gave up my work was actually I still experienced mother's guilt, but for just different reasons. And I actually became a worse mum. I, I, I lost myself and it really undermined my ability to thrive. And that's when I took, took a step back and went, oh my God, you know, this isn't about me working as a mum. 
that actually if I take away work, I'm a better mum and the guilt goes. That was not the case at all. So that was when I realised I'd got to get my mother's guilt in check. It was running the show and that it was guiding me really unhelpfully. And that's why I feel so passionate about this subject and I want to share it with you because sometimes our guilt is dysfunctional. It's not serving us and it's not helpful. And in those instances, we have to go back and change our perception of the guilt and look at what are the beliefs that underlie that guilt that actually we need to go back and change our mindset around it. So that first step is really becoming aware of it so becoming aware of how guilt shows up so how we might notice it in our body how we might notice it physiologically and understanding that all that guilt is is an emotion and emotions are chemically encoded data so what's the message in that emotion do i need to change my behavior so that i'm more in line with what's important to me my own standards and my own values or is that guilt a dysfunctional guilt and actually i need to change my perception around it And once we've done that, it's really recognising, actually, whose guilt is this anyway? Because sometimes it's not even our own guilt, it's a society guilt, a society guilt, or it's guilt that we've kind of unconsciously taken on. And I had this realisation that with my own mother's guilt, as I mentioned earlier, I got to the point where I thought the only way that I could be a good mum was to give up my work. And actually what had happened there was that I'd somehow unconsciously swallowed the belief that a good mum is a stay-at-home mum. And how that had happened was my own mum was a stay-at-home mum and she was an incredible mum who was actually a nanny before she even had children. So her whole life had been really dedicated to to being a caregiver for, for children and she was in her absolute element doing that. So I had kind of swallowed this belief that for me to be a good mum, I also needed to be a stay-at-home mum. And it was only through doing my own work on this, I realised that actually what had happened in, in psychological terms, we call it an introjection, where we take on and unconsciously take on the belief of others. And that wasn't forced upon me at all. It was just something I'd absorbed through my childhood and through kind of, you know, looking at the role models around me. That is what I'd known Um And it took some work to unpick that and realise that, no, just because that was what was right for my mum actually didn't mean that it was right for me. And I think this is a big part of this with our mothering journey is knowing that there is no right way. We've got to we've got to walk our own path with this and being able to really tolerate a degree of guilt um, if that's different to how others around us might have done it or that we've kind of unconsciously taken on so knowing that actually it might not be your own guilt it might be the guilt of from we talk in psychological terms particularly through coaching systemic coaching of the conscience group that you you once belonged and to to grow and become the person that you're meant to do sometimes we we need to tolerate a certain amount of guilt to do that and a big part of supporting us on that journey is uncovering our mothering style. And for many years in my coaching work, I've worked with leaders to do personality profiling to help them understand themselves and have a better awareness of their strengths and their preferences and their personality types so that they can channel that more effectively into their work. And when I became a mum, I somehow just forgot all of that kind of knowledge and wisdom and again it was only through this journey of kind of not thriving as a working mum I started to unpick all this and and realized that actually we I don't know about you but I absolutely had this belief that there's kind of a one mold of um what a good mum is and it's and it's this amalgamation of you know the mum that cooks the beautiful home cooked food and the house is amazing and um it's almost like this this cultural unconscious image of what a a good mum should be and this perfect mum and as we know there there isn't firstly there's no such thing as a perfect mum and you know there's no one right way to parent and it's impossible for any one person to be kind of good at all aspects of this kind of mothering game um and 
we what we often do is we'll compare ourselves to others but we're comparing ourselves to their absolute strengths and we're comparing it against our kind of weaker areas and then feeling like we're constantly falling short so we have to get rid of the myth that there's kind of a perfect mum just as when we work in organizations we'll recognize that you know there's some people that are really good at the detail orientated planning they're really good at structuring things and ordering things And then there are other people that might be at the opposite end of the scale that are more kind of big picture, creative, strategic thinking, a bit more chaotic in their approach. And just as they wouldn't kind of thrive in the same roles, we put them in different roles to play to those strengths. There's this, I believe, unconscious belief that when we become a mum, we have to fit this one kind of box. And of course, we're all very different. So we're not going to all fit into that box. And that's where I think some of the guilt and shame around motherhood hangs is that we don't all fit perfectly into this unachievable box. So it's recognising that as mums, we come in so many different styles and that those styles are good in their own and different ways and the things that I might enjoy and thrive and and be good at in motherhood will be very different from the person next to me and that doesn't mean that one's better than the other it's just that we have our different styles and our different strengths and our different preferences and I think years ago we would obviously be in these villages and that we would be able to complement each other with our skills and our preferences so that those kind of gaps wouldn't be so noticeable but now because we exist more in an independent isolated way we notice those gaps in our mothering kind of journey a bit more and we haven't necessarily got the people around us to 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 support us as much but a big part of what I would encourage you to do as as a mum is really understand your mothering style so that you can get clear on what your strengths are and kind of recognize those and acknowledge them and honor them and maybe be aware of what um, our less developed areas are and not to kind of focus on those too much but to perhaps have a plan in place that says you know what I'm not so good at these areas so you know what's my plan to make sure that I'm not kind of beating myself up around that so for me knowing my mothering style has helped me understand that Actually, my personality preference means that I enjoy my children as they get older. I have a strong, strong value for independence. So when I've got children that are very dependent on me, as my you know young children are, don't get me wrong, I love you know my children more than more than life itself. But I can really struggle when they're 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 small because of it challenges my value of independence and how my a lot of my independence is, is is. tailed in some ways because they're so dependent on me and it took me a long while to to recognize that and when I did recognize it it took away a lot of the guilt so I would really recommend doing that another strategy is around developing what I call a non-guilt agreement if you've worked in an organizational context you may have heard of um, something called an NDA which is a non-disclosure agreement Uh, I like to think of this as an NGA so a non-guilt agreement and it's just about contracting with yourself really and getting clear on what are you willing to feel guilty about so what are the standards that I do want to hold myself accountable to and consciously choosing them and being discerning about actually what do I want to feel guilty about so for me it was it's about you know I don't want to spend too much of any screen time when I'm when I'm with my children I want to be as present as possible when I'm with them I want to be you know as calm and as connected as I can be when I'm with them so you know things that get in the way of that I'm okay with feeling guilty about because that's channeling my behavior in the right direction but there are a million and one things that I'm not willing to feel guilty about anymore and you know that might go against society's expectations or the unconscious beliefs that I I once had but we have to get really really clear on what we are and what we're not going to feel guilty about otherwise that guilt would just eat away at us and guilt is a very heavy emotion 
each emotion has an emotional frequency and guilt has a very very heavy um, impact on our body and that can be you know in terms of our health and physiologically that can be quite damaging so unless we are discerning guilt will eat away at us and I can you know testify to that and I'm sure many many of you listening can as well so let's get clear let's write a list these are the things that I am going to be feel guilty about and I am going to let go of the rest and sometimes just writing it down can be incredibly powerful kind of process and then finally I would encourage you to practice guilt resilience and I don't know if you've ever come across this term but really it comes from the work of Brené Brown and if you if you're aware of Brené she is a, um, a social worker researcher and she writes around shame and vulnerability and I believe that guilt is a very close cousin of shame so guilt is saying that we've done something wrong shame says that we're wrong and I personally believe that because guilt is such feels like it's such a big part of motherhood and I think it was Ariana Huffington that once said that um when we give birth to a child they push mother's guilt back in place of the placenta you know it's that kind of deeply linked to motherhood um that actually when we experience guilt so much it can very quickly go from feeling like we're doing things wrong to that we are wrong that not only uh, do we, have we done something that's failed our children but we are failing that we are failures as mothers and shame is incredibly damaging so I think that's why we've got to be so conscious and mindful about how how we let guilt into our lives um, so that it doesn't transform from guilt to shame and what shame and guilt resilience is about is about being honest with how we're feeling and that's why having these kind of conversations on these podcasts are really important and being willing to share that with trusted people because that builds our resilience around it so actually the resilience comes from having the courage to connect with people and having the compassion to kind of listen to each other's stories and being compassionate with ourselves rather than kind of fearing that we're doing things wrong and blaming ourselves or other people and that just leaves us feeling disconnected and undermines our ability to thrive as mums because know that you're not alone is so important in this that we're all experiencing guilt maybe for different reasons at different times but being kind to ourselves around that because if we're not kind to ourselves we can't be kind to other people and knowing that actually having that tribe you know there's people around you that you can turn to when you're having your moments feeling like oh god I'm doing this all wrong um and knowing that other people are there going I'm feeling exactly the same and no you're not you're doing your best and that is more than enough is so vital because ultimately guilt undermines our happiness as mums and when we're not happy our families aren't happy and when our families aren't happy society is not happy so actually we can make the world a better place by taking responsibility for doing something with our guilt and going I'm not willing anymore to tolerate the unhelpful aspects of guilt I'm no longer just willing to accept that guilt is a big part of my life as a working mum because it doesn't have to be And this is not about we're eliminating it completely because we're not robots. We're not, you know, we can't get rid of our emotions. But what we can do is be a lot more discerning about what we do when we feel them, knowing that accepting that actually we're wired to feel guilt and anxiety as mums, that our evolutionary brain was designed to do that to protect our offspring. But in our modern world, we don't need to feel that as much as we may have done thousands of years ago so accepting that those feelings are there but still being committed to take steps towards living our lives in the way that is right for us and our families and that's going to look different for every single one of us but know that it you have the right and you have the choice and I want you to feel empowered to do that as much as possible hopefully that's been useful to you if you're interested in this topic and learning a bit more around it i'm going to be doing um a masterclass an online masterclass um if you're listening to this when when this podcast launches um you 
can get access to it because it's taking place on the 29th of March. If you head over to wisdomforworkingmums.co.uk and if you're not already, sign up and be on my email list. You'll get all the details for it. Or head over to the Wisdom for Working Mums Facebook page or find me on Instagram, which is at Nikki underscore wisdom for F-O-R working mums. And you'll get information on that. Um, it's a free online masterclass and um, sign up and you can get all the details and I'll be doing more deep dive into the things that I've spoken about today but I will be doing more on this in the future so if you're not listening to this live head over to those places anyway and you'll get the latest information. I hope this has been useful and as always I'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments, what's resonated, what your thoughts are on mother's guilt and um, yeah so head over to social media and I'd love to hear from you. If you've enjoyed this episode of Wisdom for Working Mums, please share it on social media and with your friends and family. I'd love to connect with you too. So if you head over to wisdomforworkingmums.co.uk, you'll find a link on how to do this. And if you love the show and really want to support it, please go to iTunes, write a review and subscribe. You'll be helping another working mum find this resource too. Thanks so much for listening.